Welcome, Game Up Eddie here, and today I'm building a 60 volt, 3000 watt power supply. Well, not really 3000, it's more like, um, well, 5 times 575 watts, and that's, uh, that's about 47 amps at 60 volts. I'm using this for the DPS 5015 uh, switched mode programmable power supply which you can find on Banggood and I need a lot of power for these and their maximum recommended voltage is about 60 volts so I'm going to 60 going with 60 volts to max it out and they're about 15 amps each so I can put around three in parallel which is really good also I can power things like my lipo charger and other stuff that requires 12 volts so we could just put them in series. That's uh, the connector, it's easy to solder. So that's the connector and these are negative and this is the positive. And on the back side is around the same, you can find the pin out on the RC Group's forums. This is, especially this one, is a HSTNS PL09 power supply which I got around four bucks each. You can find them if you're from Germany at uh, servershop24.de for around four to five bucks each. So to put them in series, we could just wire them up in series, no? Uh, minus to plus and so on, uh, five in series. But there is a problem. The ground is connected to the chassis well, we could just separate them each other, and that's all fine. But the connector is also grounded to the chassis, which means if I put two in series, one is shorted. And you don't want 50 amps go through this connector, right? So what we need to do is modify this without um, increasing the risk of electric shock, which means I don't cut the grounding. I just disconnect the negative rail from the chassis. So we can put them in series and everyone's happy. Okay, let's put the others one to the side. Um, I got five of them and one I already modified just to see if it works. Let's do this with another one so you can see. They also put out five volts. Uh, I think this middle one or this below is five volts. You have to look that up. Five volts at five amps each. So it's pretty handy to have. So if everything is in shut, yes. First remove the screws. And unlike me, start them somewhere where you can find them later on. Like in the landscape. <laughs> Now we can push, which bit was it, uh, and this bit was it, forward or backward? Oh, right, it just pops up. Okay, and push it forward and out. Now push this up, remove the fan so we can access the board a little better. You have to later connect it back on because they can get quite hot on the load. I don't know if the fans are running at 100% all the time, which would be pretty annoying. Just uh, unscrew the board. Oh, right, before I do this, there's a multimeter set to community mode. You can hear it beep. If not, just look at a display. If I probe the negative and the casing it beeps right also negative to negative which is logical but um, and then uh, the ground to negative which also beeps we have to disconnect them to do that unscrew the board there are three screws on this model 
There are a lot of two screws. Alright, those screws are out. Yep. And now there are another two screws down there. And the third one, which is thicker, the round M4 for the grounding wire. And there is the LED, which I'm not sure if we have to pull it out. I bet I do. So, grab the potting and push it. Oh, damn, fuck magnets. Doesn't matter if I break it. I will not see it anyways. So, the last one, let's get a gun out. The last one is down there, take that one out, it's the hardest one to get back in. Now, just try to lift the board out, it should pop out quite easily, but don't lift it out completely because it's still connected down there or even glued. So, the next step is to check which of the studs here, if you can see it, those uh, screw mounts, which of them are connected to DC ground. Set the multimeter again to continue to mount. And probe the negative rail and the studs. This one, this one, this doesn't have conductive pad on it. This one, yep, this one doesn't have a conductive pad on it. And what about these on the back side? They don't, okay? And this one, it also don't need to be disconnected, which is good. So, we just need to remove this one and these two need to be disconnected. To do that, just drill it out. Be sure to remove the metal shavings. They are quite dangerous. You don't want to them in your power supply. And the last one, which is this one. get back together and check if there is con continuity. Continuity. Ah, fucking shit. You know what I mean. Be sure to put the board underneath the insulating, isolating uh, stuff. Don't lose your bits in there. Okay. Put the LED back in there. Don't have to push it all the way through, just so you can see it if you need it and connect up the ground. Now, these ones. And, oh, okay, for those who are asking, these are the overcurrent and the voltage control pot. In case you got over 12 volts or below or anything that.
All right, you should be left over with three of the, uh, of the screws with two washers, which is good. That's what we want. Just um, check for metal shavings so it doesn't short out your power supply. And uh, before I take on the lid, just check for continuity. Continuity there. Again, if it beeps, there's something wrong. Doesn't beep. That's good. But if I check the chassis to the ground pin, it beeps. That's good. Again, check this pin, and this one, and this, and anything. It doesn't beep, which is great. This means I couldn't put this one in series. So, the last step, which is purely cosmetical, is to remove this handle. It's needed uh, for the server rack, so the power supply doesn't fall out. We don't need it. Just drill it out. Just a few, and it's up. And now, get the power supply in the right direction and put it back together. And for the last time, if everything is screwed together, check for continuity again, just to be safe. We don't want this to burn up. It's quite a lot of power in there. Nothing, that's very good. Yep. So this one is ready. And just repeat that with all four or uh, as many as you have. And then, Oh, just put them in series and start them all up at the same time. To do that, you can find the pin out on the web. It's usually usually uh, just two pins which you have to connect to ground with a resistor or directly. Doesn't matter. Just uh, yeah, a simple modification. I'm still waiting for the DPS 5015 to arrive so I can continue this video. Thank you for watching. And if you're interested in this stuff, you can check out my channel. I got a few other videos that might be interesting for you.